Welcome to the House of Israel program. This is your host, Brother Larry, bringing you the truth from God's Word. cedars in their place. This is taken from Isaiah 9, chapter 10, verse. And let me show you today how, in fact, we're building and putting cedars in those three hallowed places, the footprints of the towers in New York, the Pentagon, and the field in Pennsylvania. Walk with me through this day, and you'll see that this is, in fact, a season of hope. Walk with me through this day. And you'll see that while those bricks fell and the sycamores cut down, our people, our people, are making the cedars rise. And let us not grow weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we do not lose heart. Each time that bell tolls, it calls us to a greater purpose. It calls us to always remember that when we walk together, the cedars will rise, the stones will go up, in this season of hope, bless you for all of us. Thank you. God bless you. And God bless the United States of America. Nothing. Nothing can replace the losses of those that have suffered. I know that there is only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times like this. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That is what we will do. We will rebuild and we will recover. The people of America will stand strong together because the people of America have always stood together. And those of us privileged to serve this great nation will stand with you. God bless the people. Welcome back to the House of Israel broadcast. And this is Brother Larry. Well, as you can see, we have a couple of clips that we found from some of our politicians after 9-11. And they read some pieces from scripture that was uplifting. It gave America the, the incentive to rebuild and be better. That's the way it seems, doesn't it? But there's only one problem. The verse that they read is from Isaiah chapter 9, verse 10. And they did not read prior to that verse. They took it out of context. And basically, they are going to bring judgment to our land by this verse. So what we're going to do now, we're going to go this next, I'm sorry, this next clipping, and you'll see the full scope of this set of verses and what it means. Okay, so here we go. We're, we're going to talk about Isaiah chapter 9, starting in verse 8, and goes all the way to verse 12. Here it is.
God brought his first terrible judgment on his newly formed nation of Israel through the Assyrians, now known as modern-day Arab people, and nowadays overwhelmingly Muslim. He brought this judgment on the northern kingdom of Israel with an incursion into the land by the Assyrian people. They caused astounding devastation upon Israel, but they were not able to topple it completely until Israel responded in pride and arrogance and refused to turn back to God with its heart. So sometime later, God allowed the Assyrian Arab people to overrun, devastate, and carry off into captivity the people of Israel. The ten tribes of the north were gone and lost. In Isaiah chapter 9, we hear God's strange words of judgment upon Israel regarding this time. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and he hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. As the rest of this chapter is read, it becomes apparent to the Bible student that this is clearly a passage of judgment. On September the 11th, 2001, America suffered its worst incursion into its mainland by an enemy. They were Arabs, Muslim, terrorists. They did not succeed in toppling the nation, but they set it on its heels. What happened next, and what is still happening, with most of America not even knowing or caring, is nothing short of astounding and ominous. The eight harbingers of judgment pronounced on Israel are identically pronounced on the United States of America and have been acted out by our own nation's leaders. They are as follows. There has been no event that has touched the United States and the world more profoundly than the attacks of September the 11th, 2001. As the images of the smoke, dust, and death gorged the airwaves, the descriptions of devastation penetrated every media source. Fire, smoke, dust, ashes. The bricks of Ground Zero in Manhattan were reduced to ash with little more than dust and metal to recover. In a joint response of the nation, Senator Tom Daschle addressed the world. Recorded in the Federal Register are the words of Senator Daschle for the joint resolution of condemnation for the attacks. On the morning of September 12, 2001, Senator Daschle spoke these words. Mr. President, there is only the smallest measure of inspiration that can be taken from this devastation. But there is a passage in the Bible from Isaiah that I think speaks to all of us at times such as this. The bricks have fallen, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That is what we will do, Mr. President. We will rebuild and we will recover. Senator Daschle chose God's words of judgment as the United States government's words to its own people. And then there is the arrogance of defiance. On the day of the 9-11 tragedy, Rudy Giuliani, the mayor of New York City, punctuated the resolve of the city when he said, we will rebuild, we're going to come out of this stronger than before, politically stronger, economically stronger. The skyline will be made whole again. Isaiah 9 says, we will rebuild with hewn stone. In other words, not with brick, but with granite, quarried from the earth. The first stone to be used in the construction of the 1,176-foot Freedom Tower was hewn from New York granite and lowered by crane in a ceremony on July the 4th, 2004. Governor George Pataki of New York presided, and this is what he said. Today is indeed a monumentous day. Today we take 20 tons of granite, the bedrock of our state, and we place it as the foundation the bedrock of a new symbol of American strength and confidence. Today we lay the cornerstone for a new symbol of this city and this country and of our resolve in the face of terror. Today we build the Freedom Tower. Repeatedly, Scripture records defiance as the highest insult against the Most High God. Senator John Kerry, in his statement before the United States Senate on September the 12th, 2001, remarked, And I believe one of the first things we should commit to with federal help that underscores our nation's purpose is to rebuild the towers of the World Trade Center and show the world we are not afraid, we are defiant. The Bible records the sycamore tree as being a sign of judgment. It even says that in Egypt the sycamore tree was struck down as a sign of judgment. On September the 11th, a freak event happened in the devastation. A steel beam from the North Tower was hurled from the sky. As the tower fell, the beam went through the air and struck down an object. 
it was a tree. The next day, when the people returned to Ground Zero, they found a tree lying on the ground pierced by the beam of a falling tower. There at Ground Zero was a sycamore tree struck down. And strangely, eerily, the people made a display of it, not realizing that it was a biblical sign of judgment. A sculptor was commissioned to make a cast of it. He poured metal into the cast. He cast it into bronze, the biblical metal of judgment. An image of the fallen sycamore was to be displayed on Wall Street, cast in bronze. But there is yet another sign of God's impending judgment. The cedar tree. The Bible says the sycamores are fallen, but we will put cedars in their place. Two years after September the 11th, a strange sight was seen on Ground Zero. A crane, a different crane, was now lowering a different object. The object was being lowered to a place where there had been a hole in the ground. It was being laid over the place where the fallen sycamore tree had been struck down. It would have been natural to replace the sycamore tree with another sycamore tree. But the object lowered into the hole that day was a conifer tree, a cedar tree, the same as the cedar of Lebanon. Three years to the day after the events of September the 11th, the Democratic candidate for vice president was John Edwards. He was speaking in Washington, D.C. at a prayer gathering. It was September the 11th, the third anniversary of the devastation. And since it was a prayer breakfast, he chose a scripture which he linked to the events of September the 11th. These are his words on September the 11th, 2004. Today, on this day of remembrance and mourning, we have the Lord's word. The bricks have fallen, but we will build. With dressed stones, the sycamores have been cut down, but we will put cedars in their place. Each time the bell tolls, it calls us to a greater purpose. To never forget, it calls us to always remember that when we walk together this day, that the cedars will rise and the stones will go up. One final astounding note. On April the 30th, 1789, on that day, the United States government was born. The House, the Senate, the President, all gathered in the first nation's capital together. It was the inauguration of George Washington. It was the nation's dedication day. On that day, President Washington addressed the crowd and told them that if they did not keep their eyes on God, our nation would fail. On that day, Washington and all the other officials, the senators, the House of Representatives, the Vice President, they all left the place of inauguration and traveled on foot to a small chapel. They went inside for two hours where they prayed and committed and consecrated this nation into God's hands. The entire government was now kneeling before God. And where is America's ground of consecration? Where was America dedicated to God? The first inauguration did not take place in Washington, D.C., not in Washington at all, nor in Philadelphia. The first capital of the United States of America was New York City, declared so on September 13, 1788 by the U.S. Constitutional Convention. It was in New York City where America began as a nation. It was there where the nation was started, and it was there that the warning of the judgment of God was given on September the 11th, 2001. America, on its day of birth as a nation, was dedicated to God at the corner of a plot of land now known by a more ominous name, now known as Ground Zero. Ground Zero is the mystery place of American history. It was right there at the corner of Ground Zero that our nation's first government knelt and prayed, and it was there on September the 11th where God spoke again. What happens next to America, and probably soon, will depend upon whether America is willing to repent and turn back to God or not. So as you can see that the politicians took that verse out of context. And really what it is, it is a judgment. God set, sent a judgment to Israel. And Israel then, oh, we're going to rebuild and we're going to replace this sycamore tree with cedar trees, and we're going to be better. Okay, of course, I'm paraphrasing here. And it's the arrogance and the pride of Israel that brought judgment to them. Basically, that warning was sent to Israel because of the sin in Israel, their idolatry. They turned their back away from God. 
So God sent them a warning. And that's what, and if I, I'll go ahead and read again from the NI version. Now, the NIV, they state a little bit differently. They call it a fig tree rather than a, than a sycamore. But uh, again, that starts in um, that starts in verse eight. And it said, "The Lord has sent a message against Jacob. It will fall on Israel." So that's that message that God is sending to Israel. All the people will know it, Ephraim and the inhabitants of Samaria, who say with pride and arrogance of heart. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. The fig trees have been felled, but we will replace them with cedars. That's what the Israelis did. Then it says, but the Lord has strengthened risen and foes against them and has spurred their enemies on. The Armenians from the east and the Philistines from the west have devoured Israel with open mouth. So if you look in your history books, what happened to Israel? They were brought to captivity and then later released and the ten tribes of the house of Israel scattered throughout Europe. And that's where America comes in. We are the descendants from the ten lost tribes. And it's rather ironic that America is sent the same warning. My friends, the first warning was the first attempt on the Twin Towers. That was in 1998. It failed. And the second time it was successful. They brought the two buildings down. And then you can also say that the large hurricane they had later is part of that judgment. And I should say warning. God is warning America, we must repent of our sins. And you say, Brother Larry, what sins are you talking about? Why are we different than any place else in the world? They're sinning. We were a country based on biblical principles, my friends. The America government dedicated our government to the Lord. And we turned our back away from the Lord. First, we kicked out God out of our schools. Number two, we've legalized abortions. And we have what? Over 50 million murdered babies in our history. We have blood, innocent blood on our hands, my friends. That's what you'll find in Revelation 17 with the harlot. And then we have same-sex couples that want to marry. It's bad enough they want to marry, but we're passing laws that make it legal, my friends. And we're passing laws that everyone has to accept them as a part of of a legal union. How long will United States go on before they're judged? My friends, I prayed a few days ago. I wanted the Lord to give me a direction for my teaching. I said, please tell me what you want me to do next. And as soon as I did that, I found these clippings on the sycamore tree and on the cedar tree. Now, I saw this a year ago, but I lost it. I lost the content of the videos. I didn't download them at the time. But, miraculously, they were found because time is running short, my friends. It's running short. Okay. Now, this next clipping is, again, the judgment against New York City. See? The the cedar tree, the sycamore tree, and the falling bricks is in New York City. That is where the United States started from, from ground zero. And that's where judgment returned at ground zero. So New York City is what's depicted in Revelations 18. Okay, here's that clipping. 
Revelation chapter 18 And after these things I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power, and the earth was lightened with his glory. 2. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. 3. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the leaders of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God has remembered her inequities. 6. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her, double, according to her works. In the cup which she has filled, fill to her double. 7. How much she has glorified herself, and lived deliciously. So much torment and sorrow give her. For she says in her heart, I sit as a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. 8. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judges her. 9. And the leaders of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. 10. Standing afar off, for the fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no human buys their merchandise any more. 12. The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and of white pearls and fine linen, and blue, and silk, and red, and all kinds of wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and steel. 13. And cinnamon, and odors, and ointments, and frankincense, and wine, and oil, and fine flour, and wheat, and beasts, and sheep, and horses, and chariots, and slaves, and souls of men. 14. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. 15. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing. 16. And saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and blue and red and decked with gold and precious stones and white pearls. 17. For in one hour so great riches is come to nothing and every shipmaster and all the company and ships and sailors and as many as trade by the sea stood afar off eighteen and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning saying what city is like unto this great city nineteen and they cast dust on their heads and cried weeping and wailing saying alas alas that great city wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness for in one hour is she made desolate twenty rejoice over her thou heaven and ye holy apostles and prophets for God has avenged you on her 
21. And a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. 22. And the voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpets shall be heard no more at all in thee, and no craftsman of whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee, and the sound of a millstone or machinery shall be heard no more at all in thee. 23. And the light of a candle or lights shall shine no more at all in thee, and the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. 24. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. Yes, it's time for the spiritual and physical manifestation of the book now, of Revelation. I've aired this prophet once before, and I think it's important to bring him back again. This was a prophet that he received a vision from an angel in Romania, and he was told to come to America and prophesy what's going to happen to America. My friends, listen to his words. He has been sent from God. Yes, we have prophets today, my friends. We're not creating new prophecies. We are taking what's been written down and we're telling you what God is saying through his prophecies in Scripture. And right now, all the prophecies that are in the Bible are about to take place. Okay? So here's that prophet, the one from Romania. Okay, let's go ahead and watch. The light surrounded me, and out of the light I heard the same voice. It was the same angel. Dimitri, why are you so despaired? Why did you punish me so harshly? What did I do? Why couldn't you let me stay in prison? But my family would have had a home. I don't have a bed to lay my head down on. Why was I brought here? Dimitri, I brought you to this country because this country will burn. So why did you bring me here to burn? Why didn't you let me die in jail in my own country? He said, Dimitri, be quiet. Get beside me. I don't know what the device was, but he pulled me beside him, and he showed me all of California. Do you see what I've shown you? This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. Their sins have reached God, and God has decided to punish them by fire. He came and showed me Las Vegas. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah, and one day it will burn. He came and showed me New York. This is New York. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. In one day it will burn. And then he showed me Florida. This is Florida. This is a Sodom and Gomorrah. And in one day it will burn. But what will you do with me, I said. I told you to be quiet. And he brought me back to the place we left. He said, now we can talk. I brought you to this country because I love this country. I love the people in this country. And through your mouth, I want to wake up a lot of people. How can you wake them through my mouth when I can't understand anyone? You don't worry about that. I'll prepare some more for you to speak through. You reach television, radio, churches, but tell them everything I tell you. 
America va. Again, he said, America will burn. Cum a sărd America că America e puternică? But how can America burn when it's so powerful? I said. Tu așa să le spui cum spune. He said, tell them as I tell you. Să nu ascuns nimic că dacă ascuns aspru. Hide nothing. If you will try to hide anything, I will punish you harshly. Eu n-aș fi sovietic. The Russian spies. Au descoperit cele mai puternice depozite nucleare în America. Have figured out where the most powerful nuclear plants in America are. Când americani crede că e pace și liniște. When Americans will think it's peace and quiet. Și să punește pământul. And they rule the world. Atunci de pe ocean. Then from the ocean. Out of Cuba, Nicaragua, Central America, Mexico, they will bombard the nuclear plants in America, and America will burn. I said, but what will you do with the church? I said, many churches have left me. I said, what do you mean? Don't you have people here? He said, tell them this. People glorify people. The honor that Christ deserves. Men take upon themselves. In the church, there's divorce. There's adultery. There's sodomy. There's abortion and all kinds of sin. And Christ will not live in sin. Christ lives in holiness. And I brought you here that you cry out loud. Tell them to stop sinning and to repent. Because God never stops forgiving. Amen? Amen. And all those who will stop sinning And who will repent? God will save in the day of trouble. How can he save them if America burns, I said. He said, tell them this. As I saved Daniel from the lions, this is how I will save them. As I saved the Theolans from the furnace, this is how I will save them. And the word of God says this, one thousand will fall to your side, and ten thousand to your right, yet no man will touch you, because we are protected by the power of God, and the angels of God are around those that fear him. But brother, your life must be clean. Amen. If you are truly the angel of God, everything you say to me must be written in the Bible. If it is, then I can say this to the Americans. If it's not in the Bible, I won't say a word. Have you read Jeremiah? Yes, I have. Did you read Jeremiah 51? Of course I have. What did you understand? Păi vorbește despre Babilonul vechi. It speaks about the old Babylon, I said. O, să mai citește odată. He said, read again. Să mai citește odată. Read again. Că spune despre America. Because it speaks about America, not Babylon of old. Apocalipsul 18 ai citit. Have you read Revelation 18? Am citit, zic, tot cu privire la Babilon. I said, yes, it's also about Babylon. No, ia să mai citește odată. He said, read it again. Ca să-ți deschid mintea să înțelegi. I will open your mind and you will understand. Eu vă spun să citiți din Ieremia 51, versetul 7. Brothers, let's read out of Jeremiah 51. Începem cu 7. We'll start with verse 7. And it says, Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand that made all the earth drunk. The nations drank her wine, therefore the nations are deranged. Amen. Babylon was a golden cup in the Lord's hand. Now, are the Arabs Babylon? Those that don't even believe in God? Let's try to understand. Who is Babylon? At one point, David says, Your word, O Lord, is more precious than gold. America had the word of God in its hand. America trusted in God. America had missionaries. America spread the gospel throughout the world. Many people came to God. But America itself fell from the truth. And we ask ourselves, Has America fallen from the truth, brothers? And further down it says we would have healed Babylon. But she is not healed. Forsake her, everyone. For her, her punishment is near. So that we know it is America. Thank you for watching today's broadcast of the House of Israel. And this is Brother Larry. As you can see, let me just review what we talked about today. We talked about what many 
political leaders had said or said after nine eleven and they read something from scripture not knowing the importance of that scripture they just thought is something to be uplifting during a time of trouble so they read it and say this will give us the spirit we need to overcome this tragedy and that's what they did not knowing that the tragedy was really a message from God now if some of you would remember the Muslims that hit those buildings said that they were sent by God God told them to do what they did well they don't worship the same God we do and they are believing in a false prophet a false religion that's true but if you look in scripture what does God do when he wants to judge his people he sends people from other lands to come in and bring judgment to his people so these men in these planes were doing the work for God because he took away his blessing from our land and we're going to lose a little bit more a little bit more until the same fate will happen to us that happened to Israel we will be forced out of our land and we'll actually go back to the Holy Land that's correct you remember one of my previous broadcasts that's what we talked about so my friends those congressmen read a piece they thought was uplifting but what they did they sealed our judgment because the Twin Towers was hit because of our sins as a nation and the only way we can prevent any further judgment is to turn our back away and repent of our sins and go back to the Lord and frankly I don't see that happening my friends I think this nation is on a slippery slippery slope and if you remember in Revelations 18 verse 4 another voice in heaven said come out of her my people well that's what God has instructed me to do is tell his people in the cities around America to get out of her especially New York City get out of her because when the missile starts flying you'll have no warning my friends no warning it'll be a matter of a few minutes before those missiles reach their targets and New York City you will have millions and millions of people will be destroyed in a matter of seconds in Revelation 18 it talks about it'll be brought down in one hour it'll be brought down in one day and that's exactly what's going to happen it's like throwing a millstone in the sea that's the judgment of Babylon the Great and the fact that the officials in America did this thing with the sycamore tree and the cedar tree and they showed their arrogance they're bringing judgment to us my friends we're just repeating history so thank you for watching today and again my email address is house of dot Israel at yahoo.com and please write us letters and if you want to have answers or if you want to know how you can miss these these judgments only way you can do that my friends just like Noah just like Moses just like Sodom and Gomorrah how do those people miss judgments they gave their life to the Lord in Moses' day you had the Passover every house they had the blood of a lamb the angel of death 
passed over that house. So, my friends, right now, very soon, judgment is coming to our land. And you want the Lord to spare you and bring you to safety. No, it's not the rapture yet. The rapture will, be ha will happen rather soon. I don't have the answer when that will be. But my friends, I want all of you to be saved. I don't want anyone lost. And people say, Brother Larry, God is a loving God. He won't do these things. My friends, God hates sin. He gave you a formula for your sins to be forgiven. But most of you are not taking his formula and you're living your own life the way you want to. You don't realize you have to be his slave, my friends. You must be the Lord's slave. And if you're not his slave, well, then you're under bondage of the world, my friends. You can't serve both masters. So I want all of you, and again, I know I talk about gloom and doom. Like one street preacher said, well, if you see a house that's on fire, I should tell the people, get out of the fire. Well, that's what I'm doing, my friends. I see around the corner, doom is coming, judgment is coming to our land. Yes, if you live in Chicago, Chicago is, is also slated for destruction. Where Chicago will not be spared. I don't know all the cities that's targeted, but I know it'll be places like New York City in the New York area, Chicago area, at least San Francisco and Los Angeles, for sure. I hear some visions where it goes down into Florida, and possibly up north, northwest around Seattle. But I'm not sure about that. The main thing you can do, my friends, put your life, put your life to God, to the Lord. Because living a good life, not lying, not cheating, and being nice does not save you. All of us are wretched. We all come short to the glory of God. And that is a definition of sin, my friends. We can't earn our salvation. It's a free gift. But the Lord has to be convinced that you believe it. And if you love him, you'll follow his law. If you love him. If you don't love him, you won't follow his law. All right, my friends. Thank you. And I'll see you next time. Shalom. Thank you for watching to today's House of Israel broadcast. If you wish to contact us, email to houseof.israel at yahoo.com. Again, that's houseof.israel at yahoo.com. Now this is Brother Larry saying God bless. All my desires.